Walk in the Words by Hudson Talbot. Drawing always came naturally to me. I drew all the time. I just did it, like breathing. Every day after playing with my friends, I'd come home and draw stories that I made up. It was like diving into my own world. I liked words too, one at a time. When I was reading, I had to picture every single word. But long sentences, no way. I would start a long sentence and then my mind began to wander. I was the slowest reader in my class. When everybody was turning to the next page, I was still on the first sentence. Nobody knew. But the books knew, and they were coming for me. So many words, so many pages. Books weren't always scary. The first ones were friendly, with big pictures and only a few words. Howdy! But little by little, the pictures got smaller and the text got longer. Me eat pictures, you read. I could pick out the words that I knew, but the rest looked like squiggles. It was a reign of terror. My drawing pad was my safe place. A whole page of text looked like a wall, keeping me out. By now, everyone in my class was reading book after book, except me. What if they found out that I couldn't keep up? I had to face it. I was alone and lost in a world of words. Everywhere I looked, there were big words, strange words, scary words. One big word was stalking me, overwhelm. It described the feeling of too many words coming at me at the same time. It made me want to give up but I loved stories too much to quit. I was good at picturing stuff. Maybe I could try picturing a way out. I grabbed overwhelm and broke off over, so it just said whelm. It meant the same thing, but was more my size. Now I could whelm the words before they overwhelmed me. I just read at my own pace. After all, it was my walk in the words. I took time to look for words that I knew. There they were, like stepping stones leading me onward. I jumped over the words I didn't know and let the words I knew lead me into the story. After a while, I wasn't thinking about reading. I just wanted to know what happened next. The war between my fear of reading and my curiosity was over. Curiosity won. Books weren't so scary once I got to know them. And now that I was beginning to like words, why rush past them? I realized that just because I was slow at reading didn't mean that I had to fear it. I also learned that many great people were slow readers. I honored them all in my Slow Readers Hall of Fame. William Shakespeare, Sojourner Truth, Albert Einstein, Babe Ruth, Alexander Graham Bell, Annie Oakley, George Washington, Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci, Muhammad Ali, Joan of Arc, Picasso. 
and I tore down that terrible wall of shame. Slow readers savor the story. I experimented with ways to tell my stories. I could still tell a story with pictures. Or I could tell it with words. The Monster from Planet Mungo, Chapter 18. The monster cornered me. My gun jammed. I had to think fast, or Earth was doomed. My favorite way was using both. The monster attacked the space station. People ran for their lives. Help! The monster! He saw me. Front view. Ra! Yikes! My ray gun jammed! I had to stop the monster before he reached Earth. I remembered how my horses got better the more I drew them. My writing would improve, too, if I wrote every day. A drawing could show what a horse looked like but with words, I could bring them to life. Now they could breathe and snort and carry me on adventures. I read every day in search of new words for my stories. It was like finding new colors for my art, but now I was learning to paint with words. There were still times when I felt lost in a sea of words. My drawing pad was still my safe place. Others found music, sports, math, and science. Words had always scared me, but once I felt free to read at my own speed, they became my friends. I could unlock the magic of stories and even become a storyteller myself, turning that sea of words into an ocean of possibilities. Now all I have to do is enjoy the ride. Author's note. Long ago, when I was learning to read, there was no such word as dyslexia in common usage, or even a pleasant phrase like reluctant reader. I was just slow. I still feel a twinge from the scars left by those early memories of shame that came from the pressure to read faster than my natural pace. It occurred in my beginner's reading group. I was still sounding out the words aloud while the other first graders were reading silently. The teacher put a slip of paper between my lips to keep my mouth from moving. The other kids snickered. The message sank in. I was bad at reading. Words were not my friends. After school, I would go home, draw for a while, and then open a volume of the World Book Encyclopedia, just to look at the pictures. Without the pressure to keep up with the other kids, I found myself reading enough of the text to understand what the pictures were illustrating. My curiosity guided me. The pictures were the catalysts, but the words told the stories. That was my ticket out. By stringing together the words I knew and reading them at my own pace, the universe of stories gradually opened for me. The less I thought about reading, the more I read. I had crossed a threshold. Fear no longer prevented me from finding my own way with words. I would go on to use them to express my point of view in writing, the way that paint and pencils did in my art. There was a lot to explore. Curiosity had won. I hope that my story will help to heal those who bear similar scars to mine and will empower young readers who are on their own journey to literacy. Yeehaw! The end. Hope you enjoyed this story read by me, Star. Until next time, keep reading.